The following presentation is available in 4K. In part 1 and 2, we discuss the main aspects of the hardware and software side of the Legends Pinball 4KP. If you've not seen those two videos, I highly recommend starting there to get a better idea of the capabilities of the machine itself. I'll place links in the video description below to make them easier to find. In this video, we'll discuss the Legends Pinball 4KP EVT, or Engineering Sample, being used with OTG. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Before we dive into OTG, let's first discuss what it is for those who aren't already familiar with it. In its most basic form, it's the ability to hook up a PC, Steam Deck, ROG Ally, or most any device with HDMI output capability to your Legends pinball machine displays, thus allowing you to play pinball tables from a PC through the Legends pinball machine. In the case of Legends Pinball HD, which is the prior generation of the machine, to output to the back box, you would have to install what is called a VIBS board or Video Input Back Glass Switchboard to the back glass. This would provide a second HDMI input for the back glass images for any pinball table. With the Legends Pinball 4KP, not only is the VIBS board directly integrated or built in to the main PCB, but there is also additional inputs for the DMD or dot matrix display. The DMD isn't actually a dot matrix display, but rather an 8-inch HD display. In addition to the HDMI inputs, you also need a USB Type-A to USB Type-A cable, or OTG cable, that would connect between the Legends Pinball 4KP and the PC or other device to handle the button mapping to the software you intend to run. There are various packages such as Zen's Pinball FX, Pinball FX3, Visual Pinball X, and Future Pinball, among several others. Now that we have an overview of what OTG is, let's shift more to the devices themselves. Locating a PC that will display the playfield smoothly in 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, proved to be very challenging. My first attempt was to try a new mini PC that I received for review. This PC worked out fine in desktop mode in HD, but not in 4K. I then tried a Dell i5 with a GTX 1650 GPU that I purchased a few years ago exclusively to play OTG Pinball in HD. Unfortunately, the display in Windows couldn't be scaled to 3840 by 2160, so I had to abandon the idea of using it. The only device that I had on hand that could display the playfield at 3840 by 2160 was the ASUS ROG Ally. While technically it worked, the frame rate at 4K wasn't ideal, roughly around 30 frames per second. Though if more time was spent on it, I think it could be improved further. I posted the settings used for Pinball FX on the 4KP EVT page as a reference for further refinement. At this point, I decided to make a trip to my local Best Buy to purchase a new computer. It wasn't something I had planned on, nor wanted to do but I promised to show OTG on the 4KP and wanted to keep my promise. The PC section at Best Buy was a bit lacking, but I did find an open box ASUS laptop that has a 13-core i9 processor with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 GPU. I realize it's a bit overkill, but I'd rather test using a higher-end machine rather than making several returns to find the exact minimum machine. Here's a look at what I paid Yep, it wasn't cheap. I brought the laptop back to the office and set up Pinball FX for starters. This is the machine I'll be using throughout the remainder of this video. The fans are extremely loud while playing Pinball FX, and for that reason you'll certainly hear them running in the background. There's no way for me to filter that out easily without losing gameplay audio. If you're looking for a PC for OTG on the Legends Pinball 4KP, and want to move up to 4K, do understand that you may need to upgrade the GPU and potentially the CPU. This aspect won't come cheap, and I want to be clear, your existing PC will likely need an upgrade, or in my case, a complete replacement. Now we'll discuss the Legends 4KP OTG setup. 
After pressing the channel button at the top right corner of the machine, you'll see the HDMI input dialog. Under control mode, you'll set it for OTG, but there are other options such as OTG wireless, which is being worked on and we'll discuss in the future. Arcade Playlink is APL and is a cool way of connecting other at games devices such as the Flashback, Blast, or other at games devices using only the HDMI cable. That is, the data and video travel across a single HDMI cable. Wireless Control Deck allows you to share the built-in pinball buttons with tables and mobile phones over Bluetooth, another option we'll check out more at a later time. OTG is the option we're interested in for this video. If we select HDMI Audio Preferences, you can assign the source of the incoming audio. It will typically be HDMI N1, but could potentially be a different HDMI port. If set for automatic, it will determine the HDMI audio input source automatically. You can also specify any of the three HDMI inputs for the audio source manually if necessary. I'll leave it set for automatic for now. For the incoming display rotation, I'll be using it set as portrait when in actuality the display will appear landscape. Before we click the start button, one very nice feature is that you can easily see which HDMI input is connected. Hold on one second, I'll manually disconnect one so you can see it appear disconnected. There we have, HDMI 1 has been disconnected. This makes it easy to see if you have a connection problem with any of the HDMI input ports before starting OTG. Now we'll press start and enter OTG. At this point, I've already set up all three displays. And while this video is not meant to be a full tutorial on how to set up OTG on the 4KP, there are a few very important aspects that I think we should discuss. If we right click on the desktop and select display settings, we'll see all four monitors arranged. The display on the far right is the laptop display. Display number two on the far left is the 4K play field, followed by number three as the back glass and number four as the DMD. The numbers aren't what's important, it's their arrangement from left to right. Also, keep in mind all displays need to be perfectly aligned at the top or things won't look quite right when setting up the pinball applications. If we select the Playfield display, we'll find the scale is set for 100% and the display resolution set to 3840 by 2160. This is the same resolution that the native ALP 4KP tables will also utilize. The orientation should be set for landscape. Under Advanced Display, the refresh rate should be set for 60Hz. If we switch over to Display 3, which is the back glass, the scale will be set for 100%, but the display resolution should be 1920 by 1080 The orientation will be Landscape, and one very crucial part is under Advanced Display, make sure the refresh rate is set for 60Hz here. During my initial testing, Windows had set it for 30 Hz and had an impact on the overall OTG test measurements, providing inaccurate results. I had to re-record all of what you're about to see. Definitely make sure all three displays are set for 60 Hz or this will negatively impact latency. For the DMD display, you'll set it identically to what we just discussed for the back glass display. Shall we play a game? Using the codename of Rachel for the Vibs board as an example, comment below with your guess as to the codename for the SSF kit. Hidden clues will exist throughout this series and revealed at the end. One of the questions from part one is how are the haptics? Well, there are two haptic speakers built into every 4KP machine and work very well over OTG. To adjust the haptics, press one of the volume buttons, then the channel button, and you can adjust the haptic strength. Another question received, does the 4KP disconnect OTG after some period of time? On the ALP HD, it would seem to disconnect OTG every 5 to 7 hours, requiring a power cycle. However, I've not restarted this machine in a few days, and it's been stable. I can't guarantee that's the case, but I'm not seeing any disconnects. Now we'll check out some gameplay and perform some OTG latency tests. 
We'll start out with gameplay in Pinball FX in 4K. I'll show three different tables, and once done, I'll demonstrate some OTG latency measurements. Welcome to the end. Good luck. Obviously, one of the main things you want to get out of this video is what is the latency like on the 4KP over OTG. I'll show three quick iterations of the scene in real time, and then I'll slow it down to 10% of the actual speed so we can measure when the flipper button was pressed and the amount of time elapsed until we begin to see movement. This is a full system latency test from the time the flipper is pressed. With no tables loaded, we're seeing 83 milliseconds from the time the button is pressed until there is an on-screen indication. That is essentially less than one-tenth of a second latency. To verify the authenticity of these results, they were repeated at the At Games Lab. Same exact methodology employed here, however, at 1080p. Keep in mind these results will be slower if your back box and DMD are not set to 60 Hz. Let's see what they came up with. There you have it, two different computers, two different ALP 4K Ps, both demonstrating a latency of well under 100 milliseconds, or again, less than one-tenth of a second. Using the Pinball FX Star Trek table that we just played as an example, we'll repeat the test with three quick iterations in real time, followed by slowing the scene down to 10% of the actual speed, and check out the results. we see 116 millisecond response time, which equates to about 33 milliseconds additional latency from our original test. Realistically, you can't expect anything faster than using a USB keyboard while using OTG. So I've connected one to the laptop so we can see exactly what the latency is using just the keyboard connected to the ALP 4KP playfield. The video is stopped at the point the flipper begins to move, and the result is 100 milliseconds. This equates to around 16 milliseconds OTG latency attributed specifically to OTG alone. I think we can safely conclude OTG latency on the Legends Pinball 4KP is a non-issue. Now we'll switch over to VPX, play a few tables, and check out the latency as we did previously. <laughs>
Jesus. Next, we'll perform the same latency test as we did previously and see the results. With VPX, I'm seeing around 83 milliseconds latency. Next up, future pinball, and again with another latency test. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs> Let's check out the future pinball latency. As with VPX, I'm seeing around 83 milliseconds latency with future pinball. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope that the information just presented was helpful in demonstrating what you can expect with OTG on the Legends Pinball 4KP. There are a few updates that I'd like to provide before we move on to part 4. Yes, there will be a part 4. These points are, At Games has increased the built-in storage capacity of the 4KP from 32GB to 64GB. This is a change from part 1 and wanted to make you aware of it. The 4KP information page has also been updated. Again, I want to congratulate everyone for getting 1K likes on part 2. We will have details regarding the giveaway very soon. We'll also make sure that everyone who's interested has plenty of time to enter. In my short video, I alluded that At Games didn't say no when I mentioned having another giveaway. Well, if this video, part 3, reaches 1500 likes, I'll contact At Games and see if they will also give away several Legends 4K pinball packs. The one Legends Pinball 4KP is definitely going to be given away regardless. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future and haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.